Joining us from his home in Pinehurst, North Carolina, is John Heisinga. He was a co-chairman of the committee that concluded that the Pond's Fleischmann cold fusion claims were, frankly, worthless. Dr. Mike McCubrey is the director of the Energy Research Center at SRI. That's a scientific research institute in Menlo Park, California. He joins us from a studio at Stanford University. Dr. Heisinga, I know that you had a look at the Pond's Fleischmann work, and now here is this fellow Patterson who says that his cell does seem to work. Do you dismiss it outright, or are you interested in looking into it further? <clears throat> I think we have to look into it further, but let me simply say that uh, since Pons and Fleischmann's results were shown to be flawed, uh, there have arisen a whole uh, array of exotic uh, phenomena, including the synthesis, the synthesis of precious metals like gold, which would of course be the alchemist's dream. And the light water cells, I think, uh, that are That's the kind of cell the doctor, that, that Mr. Patterson is working that on. That Mr. Patterson is working on have all been shown not to be producing excess uh, uh, reaction products in the past. And I don't think these people have looked for the reaction products either. You're, you're betting dollars to donuts that it's worthless? I would bet very much that it's probably worthless. Dr. McCubrey, you've been doing some uh, cold fusion work of your own, haven't you? Yes, we've been working on it, uh, in fact, since the uh, Fleischmann Pons announcement. So you must believe that there's something in here somewhere? Unquestionably, there's a, a source of uh, excess heat in these experiments, where these experiments are heavy water uh, palladium experiments, the only ones that I have uh, looked at. Uh, there is a source of excess heat that we can't account for. Now, that doesn't mean that it's this cold fusion as, as we traditionally think of it. It might be something that we can't begin to understand is that, at this point. Is that right? Oh, I think so. I think the name is unfortunate. Cold fusion was coined by uh, physicist uh, Steve Jones at the outset when he thought he saw neutrons coming out of his experiments. I think whatever is happening is not likely to be deuterium fusion uh, in the heavy water cells. And if uh, Patterson is right, and I'm not certain that he is, but I believe that he might be, if he is right, then he is clearly not observing fusion. Dr. Heisenga, so here we have Dr. McCubrey, we have any number of other scientists, some of them uh, funded by Japan, some of them getting funds from corporations who say, by golly, there seems to be something in here. We're not sure what it is. Ought we to look into that more deeply? It, uh, it turns out that mainline scientists have spent hundreds of millions of dollars looking at all of these claims, and no one has been able to verify the cold fusion experiments. The broader question, Dr. McCubrey, of whether we should be spending the kinds of money that is being spent right now to pursue what some people consider to be a, a pipe dream, uh, a, a phantasmagorical idea, and what other people believe really is something. Well, there is, in fact, no theoretical objection to the existence of a uh, nuclear process occurring in a uh, solid uh, metal uh, lattice. Given the fact that it is not theoretically impossible, and it's not, uh, given the fact that people are observing it in numerous laboratories around the world, I think it would uh, pay us to pay some attention to it. And the amounts of money that are being uh, spent on this research are very, very small. Dr. Heisinga, have you looked at the studies that have been done on the Patterson cell in these other laboratories? Have you looked at them carefully to review them? I have not looked at them carefully so because I've spent... how do you know whether spent, the results are... are well, I've spent five years looking at all of the various variations of these experiments. And this is simply another variation of an experiment which Mills introduced uh, some years ago using well, light water. But, but my point, Dr. Heisinga, is if, if you haven't looked at these particular experiments, how do you know? I mean, after all, people were trying to fly for a long time before I, the Wright brothers got up there. Right. I'm simply saying that what I know about these experiments, they're using an open uh, cell and they're not taking account of recombination. That's completely and there are incorrect. Many, many completely errors incorrect. that uh, they are making that Dr. have McCubrey? not been accounted for. I, I, John's complaints, in, on one hand, are, are reasonable. There have been no clearly identified nuclear products in any of these experiments. I agree with that completely. His uh, objections to the experimental techniques, the statistical analysis, uh, failing to account for uh, obvious chemical processes such as uh, recombination, his objections there are nonsensical. It's, ju it's just not correct. Dr. McCubrey, here we are. We don't know much about all this sort of thing, but we, but we listen to, you, to two distinguished scientists who disagree very clearly about this. Uh, do you believe that there could be a kind of energy source which seems to spring out of, at least to us, nowhere that could be found by people like you or people like Mr. Patterson? 
I've no reason to believe that that's possible, but I have no reason to believe that it is not possible, and there are many uh, reputable people performing careful experiments with careful controls who seem to give evidence just of the sort that you've described. Dr. Huizenga, I'm going to give you the last word. Do, do, you, okay, believe that it is at, do you believe that it is at least possible that uh, such an uh, energy source might be out there and might be found sometime? I mean, everything is possible, but in science, one has to have a reproducible experiment which mainline scientists can reproduce and cold fusion uh, fails this very simple test of reproducibility has not and achieved you it cannot yet. talk about having a nuclear process if you've not seen the nuclear products and the x-rays which must be present and all of these experiments do not see the nuclear products nor do they see the x-rays and therefore it, it makes no sense to talk about these reactions without seeing products. But you'd like to see them continue the research, Dr. Heisinger? You'd like to see that kind of? Uh, if they want to uh, spend their time doing those kinds of experiments, uh, uh, that's the choice they have to make. Uh, Gentlemen, on that point, I, I think we leave it. Dr. McCoubrey, Dr. Heisinger, I thank you very much. And Dr. McCoubrey, I wish you well with your research.